What is going on guys, Wiser here, coming to you with a recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. This was a ranged matchup against North Watchers, and actually this is a very, very special episode, actually. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say right off the bat. Um, going to do an extended recap. Got a lot of attacks I want to show. There's kind of a theme to the attacks. Uh, but before we get there, um, I just wanted to mention a few things. This was our 300th win. Um, not only was it our 300th win, but it was... Um, basically on my one year anniversary within the 2.0 family and uh yeah it's just a very special special uh recap i'm gonna get to do here so uh just want to hop right in because um there's a few things i want to go over and just kind of talk to you guys about um see the 116 114 victory for 2.0 just just fantastic job i know north north watchers had uh had a chance to make it theirs because they definitely had us on destruction and just couldn't get it done they ended up leaving a couple 11s only one starred and ended up being their demise but uh, hey we will take it absolutely uh 300th win is in the books uh and with that being said uh i just wanted to talk a little bit hopefully quickly here about um just kind of my history with Oneheim and my history with all my clanmates, because realistically, you know, these are the guys that make it happen. I mean, I, I, I'm lucky to even be here with these guys, because they're just an elite group of guys, and, um, you know, some of them old, some of them new. Uh, 2.0 is about, right now, I think there's about 12, 13 guys that were here prior to when I got promoted to 2.0. Um, now, in Invicta, when I got taken into an Invicta, uh, that was obviously August last year, they were in the process of doing this mass recruiting. And essentially, at that point in time, I was I don't know the exact details because I wasn't obviously part of leadership then, but they were in a process of making Invicta the elite war clan it is today. It is essentially, I mean, we call it our arranged war training clan, but that doesn't even do it justice. They are their own war clan and i love those guys down in Victor. i war with them all the time still I, every single person in, in the clan you know i just I have such a good relationship with and i just kind of want to go into that like you know you look at this top group here team unique i watched this guy rise through the ranks i knew i knew jeff he's he's a friend of mine he, he lives a few hours away from me came uh came down to chicago with me um i watched him uh, come through the ranks and and be patient and just and and do his thing and he's, he just today got promoted to elder and th10 war general for 2.0 um you know he we were in he came from my old clan he came from the clan that i'm sure we're, we've all been in a very similar situation where you start playing this game and you you take it seriously and then everyone else in your clan doesn't take it seriously and you try and help them or make them take it seriously and it doesn't work and it's the most frustrating thing ever and you don't really know what to do if you don't end up stumbling across one of jake's videos or something and rip jake this is another kind of you know tough tough week for clash of clans as well uh, but we move forward after obviously losing a guy like jake uh, from doing content is huge but if you don't stumble across his videos you get stuck in the in the clan and you, and you never get to experience what an arranged war is and um you know i didn't want jeff to do that so i kind of kind of poached him for my old clan but it was it, he wanted more out of the game and he just didn't know where to get it so i just showed him the door uh anyhow uh you know self fence i watched come up he got promoted to 2.0 before me um believe we got to invicta about the same time but he just flew through invicta because he is so good at town hall 9 jumped up to town hall 10 took it over right away and just went right through to 11 and uh, is absolutely doing a great job as you can see a couple perfect bullies there for that guy the ice man good friend uh you know he's he does a lot for this clan he runs uh venom uh basically hands down and kept it going after we lost dws which is uh, another sad thing about 2.0 but everyone moves on with life um you know a lot of people king in there desserts i always looked up to this guy you know he's um he left for a little bit uh and then came back actually when sort of the leadership whole leadership thing changed back with uh when chief kev left chat you know watch this guy come up he's uh he doesn't live healing those couple hours for me he came down to chicago with us qc definitely definitely um good friend of mine love this girl uh even though i've never met her in real life you just there's those people that you feel like you've known your whole life in fact we found out through talking we're basically the same age she went to a high school in my district in calgary um i now live nowhere near calgary but uh when i at the same time because we're both the same age and it's kind of weird just very weird instance because i had friends that went to her school and it wasn't even far from it I, that was actually the school i was supposed to go to, supposed to, go to but 
um, whatever. Uh, moving on, who else we got? Kickbacks definitely came up to Invicta same time as me. Chad is was an Invicta forever. He was Invicta before me. I'm not sure how long to be exact. Warble, another man that uh, he lives in Toronto as well. Another Canadian on the board there. Uh, you know, love this guy. He did miss an attack this war, but something really bad happened. Warb's never missed an attack, so it was for good reason clearly. But um, you know, love this guy. Zed Bear. <laughs> I want Zed Bear. Zed Bear t did his tryouts with Invicta a long time ago, be before Power COC was a clan. And his first war ever was an arranged matchup against WHF, or maybe it was a random, maybe it was arranged, I forget. But he did, he made like a troll base on prep day and said something like WHF one star heroes or something like that. Just something ridiculous. And Chief Kev went off and booted him. So <laughs> tough one, but he is back and he is awesome. He uh, is just now getting promoted to 2.0. So grats, Z Bear. Love ya. Jamie, love this girl too. She also met us all in Chicago. Z Bear was in Chicago as well. Days was in Chicago. You know, Jamie, Jamie is awesome. Jamie, Jamie and QC are like our clan moms, you know. They just, and I don't say that in the any sort of, please, I would hope no one would ever take that negatively, but in the sense that they keep us in check and, you know, it's a clan full of males, right? I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You know, they, they take care of us, right? They're, they're concerning. They keep us real. And I'm so glad and uh, to point out, I was so blessed to have uh, two fine ladies like QC and Jamie in it because it really, really keeps things classy. We'll just say that. Days, awesome guy. This guy's a fireball. Um, met him in Chicago as well. Derpidu, one of the longest standing Invicta members of all time. Love having him in 2.0 oh, now, man. Well, well, well deserved. And all these guys, Logic was uh, another guy like South Fence just auto came up and just was ripping it up. I can't say anything. You you guys know I have a great relationship with this guy right here. This is uh this is the man. This man holding all together at Town Hall Nine War General, really really helping us actually get there again. You know I mean uh, we struggle. You know we're not. I would never not even say we're a top twenty clan by any means, but we're fighting for it. Right? We've beat you know a lot of good clans. Um, much more in the last three four months than we have prior to that ever so really really and, and i shouldn't say that i don't want to get any negative but really uh we just were kind of kind of slumping for a while and I, uh caddick and and guys like mcgrady he's here somewhere oh he's on his alt for this one because of weight or something and yeah, Grady's way at the bottom with his like 2020 heroes but you know these guys really help push our clan forward you know hopefully i didn't miss anyone specifically jake another guy that came to chicago with us just awesome just got promoted he was a victor co for a long time it's really hard to promote co's that aren't in 2.0 that are of other clans because they just help the other clans so much it's hard to pull them out of that role but we finally got pit over and he's just awesome mouthpiece just fearless leader the guy that promoted me to 2.0 himself the guy that's always believed in in me and and knows that uh, my commitment to this clan and i just want to do everything i can to help continue to bring it forward so anyhow guys enough blabbing let's get into some replays here you know all, all 2.0 i love you guys we couldn't uh couldn't do this without the kind of camaraderie we uh, camaraderie we have you know one one thing i said once in leader chat was um a lot of clans treat just treat their uh treat their members Maybe not a, a lot, but there's definitely a lot of clans out there where they don't have the kind of family atmosphere that we do. And it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I wouldn't trade any of you guys for the world. So moving on, let's check this out. <clears throat> really good War North watchers. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to start right down at the bottom. I got a lot of chicken scratch going on on my piece of paper. Hopefully I didn't blab for too long there. Da -da -da. This is Eris, and I did watch all these. I've been setting the, I've set this up since yesterday. So the theme, general theme, I think almost every, almost every attack. Maybe not. I think there's one that doesn't have this, but pretty much every attack, and I'm showing a lot of attacks, is bowlers in CC. Now, there's all talks, right, about the HGHB and how it's so powerful, and then... There's these other strats kind of going around, and now now everyone's just realizing it's not the HGH part that's the problem. It's these little blue Smurfs coming out, and everyone knows, at least can somewhat 
admit that there needs to be some tweaks. I mean, exactly what that is, I don't know. I've talked about it a little bit in other videos, maybe thrown out some suggestions. I don't want the bowler to be nerfed, but because this video is really going to dictate and show why they do need to be changed. Because it's basically, you can take bowlers in the CC with almost any conventional or unconventional Town Hall 9 three-star strat, and even in some cases, like I said, unconventional strats that probably in the old days would not have been a three-star, any sort of three-star strat, and just throw bowlers in the CC and make it work. Now, this Lalo, right, you, you still got to plan, you still got to figure it out, right, but the, with the bowlers getting in there, look at that, boom, doesn't even need to get balloons to that air defense, the bowlers are getting it from way over here, there's only one air defense to go, Eris is just going to smash the rest of this base, got to get those loons over there. And just in time they do. Down goes the air defense and clean up time. Beautiful. Okay, again. Every video, the cat has to jump in my lap. Jeez. Tree in the back for Eris. Nice job. Um, what do I got? Chad Fowler. So here we go with another Lalo. A uh, lot of Lalos here, right? But different variations. You're going to see a lot of air attacks. And the reason being, you can take a couple golems and bowlers in the CC and get insane amounts of damage done because of the bowlers. And uh, you just use the golems to tank for the bowlers while they smash the base. Drop a rage on them. You're going to get a lot of value. So the jump spell is going to go down. And you're going to see what happens here. Basically, this whole top section of the base gets taken out and because of that there's only one air defense remaining and when you bring a, uh, a couple lava hounds and 16 balloons you're looking pretty at that point so here come the bowlers in behind the king queen's kind of got the expo locked on but she's gonna fit that ability and gonna de-aggro here in one sec or just let the queen die i didn't notice that in the first time i watched <laughs> kind of funny Oh well, Chad Fowler, you still came away at the tree you didn't even need your queen just because of the bowlers um poison goes down <clears throat> Luckily, the poison can take care of that uh, clan castle because otherwise he might have been in trouble. Nothing uh, to target air. So uh, if he had a baby dragon that wasn't didn't necessarily go right into that poison right away, could have been a problem. But doesn't matter. Uh, triggers the DGP. Bowlers are still alive. I believe? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. The, the bowlers don't get this air defense. The uh, the the golemites do here. Um, so the golemites are gonna burst, take care of that air D, and see what I mean. There's one air defense left. Um, the bowlers didn't even really do that much. He lost his queen right early on. So he could have got way more push out of that if, if things had went a little bit differently on the entry. But it doesn't matter. He still is going to come away with this, right? Nice quick case because uh, the seem seemingly a lot of these new meta bases are having very unprotected air defenses. Not a huge fan of it myself, but it's... Town Hall 9 defending now is just ridiculous, uh, to say the least. So, and these little guys right here, I'm telling you, are the problem altogether. And um, we won't talk about any of the units in the bowler because that's kind of the theme in this video. But maybe when we get, when we get to it, we got a couple Town Hall 10 triples to show you as well. So, mm -mm -mm. Chad Fowler comes away with the tree. Uh, moving on to number 34. Well, so uh, still an air attack, right? We're still going to see bowlers in the CC. We're going to see a golem entry here, right? Brings the one lava out. If you don't want to bring loons and have to worry about loon deployment, hey, let's just bring five drags <laughs> with one lava hound. So going to go ahead and create this funnel. <clears throat> get a couple free buildings. Get every oh yeah he walks the queen down this way that's right that's kind of neat what he does here uh takes care of these defenses lets the golem walk down to this golem lets everything into this compartment right right here wall breakers are successful boom boom so in we go king's gonna go down bowlers go down let's move right in there's a lava hand on the cc which kind of puts a damper on things um you don't see that too too often anymore but it's good for a clan to maybe just kind of throw one in there as a to just to throw people off, right? Um, you, you just diverse CCs. That's all you can really do now. Town Hall Nine. <clears throat> Anyhow, look at look at like, look at this. Look at how much the queen is still in there. The queen is now still under the rage. Gonna have to hit that ability to de aggro on the expo. Uh, but now that these dragons are, it doesn't matter. The lava hound isn't even burst yet, which it will at this like exact perfect moment. 
Oh, I thought he hit it. Swear, I thought for some reason. I think it hits a. Uh, I think it hits a mine here. No, well, maybe not. I swear, I thought that lava hound would burst before, but it doesn't matter when you got five dragons sitting there, four dragons, whatever. Swag poison in the middle. Goodbye. <clears throat> All right, thirty-three. Oh, hi, Kriya. Here's a guy that was in Invicta before me. <clears throat> so interesting base, Kriya, with these three air defense. Um, you're going to see how easily exploited that is. One golem down, two golems down, right on the anchors there for the um, for the funnel. Get the wizards down, get that funnel going. Going to open up that corner. So that mortar goes down, the golems are going to route in, the king and queen are going to route in, bowlers are going to route in, and going to get three air defense, step up, and get a bunch more stuff in the core there. <clears throat> another uh, another hound in the CC, so that's kind of interesting. It doesn't matter to the bowlers, though. They're going to continue on. Queen's going to get locked up, though, unfortunately. Zapquake goes down on pretty much the only air defense remaining other than this one that's about to go down as soon as the bowlers make their way there. So let's go ahead and deploy the five dragons down now from six to basically uh, four o'clock. <clears throat> Trying to get a little bit of a funnel there with the one on the outside. Uh, so it kind of works, but then I would have also only dropped maybe one on the outside and then had four go in the core because those Teslas are doing a lot of damage to that king and stuff in the core there. But it doesn't matter. <clears throat> just five dragons now is still too much. He had six dragons because one ended up dying over here. Drops a couple, uh, drops a mini on that uh, builder's hut. Nice little spot on that. I hate those stupid builder's huts. But you should plan for them, obviously. Drags are just going to work through the rest of this core. Bam, bam, bam. Of course, the Tesla with a, with a sliver of health. <laughs> I should have checked the time on this one. Nah, he was good. He was really good, I think. <laughs> He's Patino. It's tree in the bag on Kriya, man. Um, what else I got here? 29, Lime Killer. Same idea. Let's go ahead and drop a couple golems. Let's create a funnel. Just shatter, just literally shatter Lalo style, except we're bringing bowlers in the CC. So going ahead and creating la a funnel. In go the heroes, in go the bowlers. Poison goes down, taking care of the Valks and baby drag that come out. No big deal for that stuff. It's under heal. Valk does a little bit of work to the golem there. Um, King has to hit the ability here. Oh, is he going to lose it? No, hits it just in time. Uh, doesn't quite get the full duration. Oh, maybe he does. It finally it killed. Uh, the queen stepped up and killed the baby drag that was locked onto them. So that was good. Bowler's in there just smashing stuff up, right? Has uh, two Lava Hounds, 14 balloons, basically for this ten or 9 to 12 section. So in go the Lava Hounds. A couple balloons just kind of starting to try and support some of these bowlers, even though he ends up losing them. That wizard tower did big damage with the mortar splash on him. Finally hits that queen ability, gets through the wall. The queen's going to be free to clean up at the 6 o'clock side. Just needs to make sure that this one Lama Hound survives. Does just enough tanking to let everything into that Tesla farm there. <clears throat> Might have been a little overzealous on those uh, balloons from 12. I would have waited till the, the the Hound got to the air defense. But no big deal, right? Air defense is almost dead. It really just needs one balloon shot. Just needs to get over there going to have just enough down goes the air defense there's an archer tower to go beautiful <clears throat> that's going to be tree in the bag for lime killer nice job man um next on the block 23 Days, my man, days. Uh, so he is going to bring here, I believe, just that cold-blooded with bowlers. So it's like a cold-blooded goho with, uh, with a walk. Yeah, that's right. So I think he's just going to take out this stuff on the corner with this little bit of a walk. He's going to drop this golem somewhere on the other side. And... Um, Go in from the 12 o'clock, I believe, right at the queen. Yeah, there she goes. She's going to walk her way up here. 
<clears throat> nice early rage on that. Start bursting through that stuff. He's going to have to go ahead and drop that poison as well, I think. And down goes the poison. No, no poison. Just has the early rage down. I like to do that sometimes, but I guess realistically she only had the one point defense targeting her, uh, and then the cannon locks on right after the queen dies, so it just worked out perfectly. In goes that cold-blooded golem I was talking about. Baby drag there on the outside. Going to get pretty good value out of this baby drag as well. Working on that uh, dark elixir storage. Out comes the clan castle. Queen is right there. She's going to help that stuff out. Down go the poisons. <clears throat> Boom, queen locking onto the CC troops. Finally, that stupid dark elixir storage is down. Down goes the town hall. Everything's going to route now to this wall here. Fortunately, dead all wall break fail there, I believe, but just needs a few more hits. In come the uh, bowlers. They do walk in. He's a little lucky that that gold storage did not yank the bowlers to the outside. That is a... Uh, it's like, if you look out... Well, yeah, close call. Very close call days. But got them all in there, right? They're just smashing up those high hit point buildings like absolutely nothing. They're going to take that jump. He has two heals now in the bag still for uh, the hogs. And uh, everything else is they're meeting up. I think what he realizes with this is there's... The way... That, the, how compact the base is. This is like over defending against HGHB. And it's not the HGH that's the problem. You don't need to defend against the necessary giants. I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I don't know the way to describe it other than it's the bowlers. And it doesn't matter really what you do. You just need to build an overall sound base and force a second defend. That's that's it. Like that's that's be really your main goal is Town Hall 9 defending now, right? That heal was basically swag. There goes that DGB there, but triggered just in time. Beautiful treat in the bag for days so there's a little queen walk cold-blooded goho with bowlers so instead of the uh, cold-blooded or shattered lalos with bowlers or dragons with bowlers we now have cold-blooded walks with bowlers right <laughs> all right so let's keep moving on here uh 22 right up uh one more good old leo Leo doesn't need bowlers. This is the one attack that did not have bowlers in the CC, I believe. Leo just goes ahead and cold-blooded uh, quad lalos this. Nice early poison down on that queen. Keep that golem going. Let that king in there. Take down that defensive queen. Pull out that CC. Poisons are down. <clears throat> Everything looking dandy. Rage is down. Queen's going to get pretty good value working through that stuff. Down goes that clan castle. They're going to move up basically finish off this section of the base but they got a big chunk out of that unwalled section there so uh leo goes ahead and drops his first uh three lava hounds there i believe and uh, gets everything on and he just recognizes the way this kind of wing base is set up it's gonna everything's gonna kind of go down and down and back up um, so the pathing is fairly easy to, easy to judge. This is only danger moment because the hounds split off from the loons, but everything's dead on this side. So raid perfect placement because he needs to get through that, but he's got the lava hound sitting on that air defense, tanking the expo. It's no big deal as long as those wizard towers go down, which they do. It's see you later. If you look at this section, as soon as this Tesla air defense are down, there's only a couple archer towers and a Tesla over there to go, and he has way too many units for that. Did not need that haste. Has a haste, swag haste, and then bag cleanup troops all over the place. Leo just absolutely smashes it. Nice job, buddy. Leo is definitely the new air master. I shouldn't say new. Leo is definitely our air master. That's what I meant to say. All right, 21. Love this guy. McGrave it. Using his other account with his 2020 heroes here, um, showing us how it's done, coming from the 40 spot, jumping up on number 21 here. Uh, so, Gray brings uh, a, a stoned Goho with bowlers. <laughs> so, he's got three golems he's going to send in. Just going to get all that funnel created, all that nice stuff. In goes that test wall breaker. He's going to go ahead and drop one, two, three behind it, open it up. Let those golems in. Here comes the next golem right now. So three golems are now in. Here comes the bowlers. Here comes the king. Here comes the queen. Everything going to just get, like, think about the, the tanking value now that these golems are going to get. They're just going to work their way in. 
probably a little preemptive on the King because the King ended up taking the tank and the Teslas instead of the Golem. So that was a little bit unfortunate. But hits that ability. They take care of all that stuff. Moving through, he's just got to start deploying hogs now. He sends three hogs here to protect those bowlers. That was really smart. Definitely probably was not in his planning, so really good on-the-fly adjustment there, Gravy. Goes ahead and sends a few down on this side. Also, same recognizes the queen ended up going to the outside, so let's go ahead and drop a few hogs and help her up so she can just get cleaning done up on, uh, on the outside here. Still has 11 hogs, mind you, right? And there's only this bottom sort of nine to six section to worry about. And he still has units in that core doing work, trying to get to that defensive queen, unfortunately. She's going to go down one more bowler shot. Down she goes under that poison. Still has a golem in there, right? But the, um, you know, kids, king's dead. Everything that was in there doing damage is dead. So it's really up to the hogs now. Because uh, if the hogs don't clear the defenses, this queen cannot clean up the base. So deploys them perfectly he's gonna hit a dgb here in a second but has just enough to make sure that expo goes down i think he loses three hogs only sorry it wasn't a dgb even it was a sort of makeshift dgb with the small bombs and the oh yeah that's right <laughs> the one hero hog oh i missed his health i wish i could click on him he, there he is look at the health on that hog and the fact that he took a oop, whoa sorry about that the fact that he took out that sweeper um and i believe he gets early work done on the core but really that sweeper i don't know might have been a 99 percent if the hog didn't survive um we're gonna see the cleanup here in one sec uh, yeah maybe maybe not hard to say whatever but i just thought it's funny that hog survived with the sliver of health tree in the bag for grady job buddy number 20 Oh, Ryan. We're going back to Shattered Lalos with bowlers. <clears throat> so here comes the golem. Here comes the second golem. We're going to go ahead and create the funnel. Same old shite. Bam, bam, bam. There goes the entry. And hey, what's this? My king just walked. That doesn't really matter because the queen's right here. Every, the bowlers are going to lock on. Uh, his queen's going to lock on. No big deal. So the kings of anything is going to do clean up on the outside there. Queen stepping up. Bowler stepping up under that rage. Taking care of that Tesla farm. Huge value out of that kill squad, right? Because um, with the queen and the CC on the entry there and getting three Teslas and all that stuff, and the queen is still in there doing work, we still have now. T Unfortunately, she hasn't got an air defense yet, but she will definitely get this one. So he's just waiting this out a little bit to make sure that um, it does, in fact, go down. There he goes. Down it goes. And you're going to see instantly in come the Lava Hounds. Here they are. A few loons at the top there. <clears throat> kind of interested why he didn't just drop the Lava Hound first instead of losing a loon there. But whatever. Hound is now in. Rage is down. I'm going to throw everything across. <clears throat> Heal spell down as well. I think he forgot to heal the kill squad. I, wa I was wondering about that too when I watched the thing. I know the heal was not for the air section. But hey, why not? Let's keep those balloons healed up. Uh, one air defense to go. Just being very uh, surgical about this. Probably could have even held on to a couple of these loons. Even dropped them as distraction for the whiz tower. Because this is a very big threat for a huge pack of balloons like this. Double whiz towers. And is a little bit late on the cleanup balloons he does save. Um... But it doesn't really matter. He's got way too many of them. Boom, boom, boom. Down we go. See you later, Wizard Tower. See you later, Mortar. And see you later, Tesla. This base is done for. And there, my friends, is another Shattered Lala with bowlers. It, it just feels like you can just take any Town Hall 9 attack and put bowlers in your CC instead of whatever else you were going to and have a really good chance now um, at getting a plan going. Uh, what, what did I have next? 17, Jamie. Bring in the blue villa. So this is basically just like, who needs hogs? Let's just bring a bunch of Valks and bowlers. <laughs> we can walk the queen. Uh, I love it. It's sort of like a dual walk. We're going to go ahead and take care of this stuff. Walk the queen down this side. Now, the reason, if you're looking to plan do this attack, the reason Jamie chose this side is because after she steps up here, she's going to walk down this way. Well, what down here 
is of any threat to her healers. Nothing. Now, unfortunately, the clan castle pulls her up a little bit, and then he and she ends up going up, I believe. Has to hit that ability, but that's fine. Yep. So she goes up, unfortunately. And oh no, she goes back. Beautiful. So she's gonna go back, she's gonna end up joining these Valks. You create you create the other side with the bowlers in the CC now. So you're using them a little bit differently. You're not getting them into the core. You're using them to create and clean up around the edges. And same thing goes, the bowlers are gonna walk up this side. These air defense cannot target these healers. So these bowlers are just gonna are gonna be fine. There's gonna be absolutely nothing that any of those defenses can do to them. Obviously the base isn't gonna have any sort of double giant bomb on the outside. So as long as you keep those three healers away from the air defense those bowlers are not going to die right so the kill squad's in now the other nice part about this attack is you send in these valves you don't even bring jumps you just bring heals see she drops this heal most of the valves go up here this is like the worst thing that can happen on this attack at worst <laughs> is if your healer if most of your valves separate from your heroes and bowlers then they do kind of pit her out as you see they're gonna they finally do break through get the queen but that's it they die she lost like six seven eight valves there uh, and that literally is like the worst thing that can happen when you're doing this attack. A lot of times, all that stuff just meets up and they walk, go through the core and just crush. Um, but you can see, too, her queen steps away from the healer. Like, the healer's right beside of the queen, and she still it didn't lock on. It's healing the bowler that isn't getting touched. So stupid. But as you can see, the king, the bowlers, all those healers still up, really, she's fine. There's nothing that the the Archer Towers and Wistar could do under to the King or the Bowlers with the healers on them. So just going to finish off the rest of this base. Smashy, smashy. Let's hit the ability. Call it a day and put a tree star in the bag for Jamie. Just just been killing it for us lately with this blue healer attack, guys. I'm telling you, seven healers, 12 Valks. Just bring a, either a couple rages, a couple heals, three heals, all four heals even. Um, and keep them up through the base. Uh, the nice part is, part of this attack is no jumps. The reason being, a jump gives Valks options, I find, where if you just rely on them breaking walls and keep them healed when they get stuck on the walls or pay attention, like that's their vulnerable points. When they're trying to take down those walls inside the base, um, but they stay together. As With jumps, they split up a lot more. That's, that's all I can say about it. I don't know. And seven healers, they end up locking on absolutely just awesome attack just a beast attack zed bear love this guy this guy's an awesome air attacker i'm gonna see same freaking thing shattered lalo with bowlers in the cc so um it's just absolutely wrecking bases this is an overall i mean this doesn't like overcompensate i find for any a lot of those other bases uh, you're seeing the Lalos on are sort of overly exaggerated compensations for um, HGHB defense. Well, even bases where the air defense are spread out pretty well, like the bowlers can't really, aren't going to stand there and finish off that air defense. They still get two air defense, the queen, the CC all out of the deal here. Two golems in there doing tanking. They're going to take out the rest of this three o'clock section of the base and only leave... It, unfortunately there's three air defense but there's nothing else to the base like the base just got gutted um i don't think this air defense goes down no this bowler dies out here the golems end up getting stuck on the wall i think maybe this full, this unburst golem eventually gets through but the air attacks already commenced so here comes a few balloons from three o'clock kind of strange positioning on that i wasn't i think he was trying to target that air defense uh, unfortunately that mortar got in the way so there they go finally going right towards that air defense and the other thing is i w i don't know if i would have even done what he did because i'm pretty sure those golem golemites were going to get the air defense on their own um i would have started from this one over here but whatever right has two lava hounds moving in there taking some mines to the face so one does burst still has another one in there so absolutely perfect Three balloons there, two balloon, one balloon, one balloon, right? Just, just sprinkling them in around the outside. Still has the bowlers and king walking around this base, and it's done. Like, just unbelievable. Just absolutely smashed it. Nice job, Z-Bear. Stupid builder's hut. Tree in the bag. Um, 15. K-Dick. Love this guy. Showing us the HGHB. It's just so good. Uh, kind of interesting. He went right at the 
um, the queen chamber, but he found the perfect spot that the queen didn't target. So that was obviously intentional. Um, a lot of times you don't want to, because you got to wait. You, you can't, the entry, you can't really lose a bunch of giants. So you want, you need to wait for that funnel to get created um, and then get that poison down on that queen. Everything's going to kind of move in here. It's kind of nice the bowl, uh, goal, uh, bowlers walked left first and then back in. Because uh, if they had walked right, they might have walked around the base, but they didn't. They end up standing there uh, hitting the, uh, the air defense, all that stuff, right? Second rage goes down. Uh, unfortunately, I've had this happen too. Healer's locking on to a freaking wizard. Like, give me a break. So ridiculous. So this is how powerful this attack is. Because we have healers healing freaking wizards. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so uh the wizard's getting healed up nicely though. He's he's keeping moving. We got polars under the heel now. Um would have been nice to have the healers in here healing that king who's doing crazy work. Bowlers end up smashing through that expo though, just reinforcing few at a time with hogs. Finally, the uh, the healers now lock onto the queen at least. But they, again, they should be in this core, which would have been absolutely perfect, keeping this stuff going. But just smashing through this base, rage go, rage is down, right? Um, nice split. The giants walk right over that DGB while the bowlers are standing there doing damage. Just perfect. Never want those bowlers to go over that DGB or they are done for. Really, there's only a couple cannons. Arch tower to go. Oh, that's right. Freaking healers on the wizards. Just do a little wizard walk. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> See that builder shot there? I wonder if that scared him at the end. Because look how... Oh, it's all open at least. So, yeah, I just got one shot on the cannon. Let's move forward. Take care of that builder shot. Tree in the bag for Caddick. Love you, buddy. All right. So I think I got a couple tens here to show you. I'm going to call it a day. Already a super long video. So Danny Ho going in here. We got level one Inferno. So here, here's the Town Hall 10. Um, crazy 32 minor attack. Now, this is a lot easier with the Town Hall 1 Infernos. Um, similar principles. You got to create that funnel. So you're going to see that happen here. Down goes that gold storage, or gold mine, sorry. In goes a gold. <clears throat> Basically, this jumps letting, uh, letting things right into this Inferno Tower, which is uh, absolutely perfect. Queen's just going to finish that off, start locking on to those CC troops. Or not. Sorry, King has to raise it up, takes care of the Inferno Tower, hits that ability on the Queen as well. In come the miners. Basically, this whole section. Let's just roll our face from left to right. Oh, we try to drop the CC in there with their nose. And watch them do their thing. Let's uh, keep them healed a little bit. We're going to zoom in because you can't really see miners do their work. Oh, that's a little too far. Sorry, guys. Uh, there we go. And look at them go. <laughs> like, just ridiculous. Let's keep them healed. They're all kind of staying in the clump. It was like an Asian wall of miners coming across. You know, Lava Hound on the CC, you don't really need to worry about it. It does suck because it holds your queen up, but realistically, the main part of the attack is the miners. Let's just heal these two up here and have one get tossed to a spring trap. But who cares? You don't even see them. Look at them all. Oh, look at that huge clump of miners. I wonder how many, how many is left. But there is a crap ton of miners coming up. And down goes the cannon. Boom. Tree in the bag for Danny Ho. Good job, buddy. <clears throat> one one spot where North Watchers absolutely dominated us on was the Town Hall 10. They had, I think, four or five even 10 versus 10 triples, where we only, I believe, had two. At least I hope I'm not missing one. So I got... Oh, maybe I am missing one. I got 13. I got 12. Zerds. Guns. Kane. South. Okay. Yeah, I'm right. Good. Yeah, so we only had two. So that was kind of our downfall, but our 11s were flawless. So that was sort of our lucky uh, lucky card. Our 11s were absolutely awesome. No, uh, our 10s were good too, so can't complain. Uh, Zerdzy boy, going to finish this recap off for me. Bringing a very uh, interesting attack. 16 Valks he's got with uh, four healers. <clears throat> so drops the queen. He's just He knows the queen. Like There's no buildings up here at all. So he knows the queen's just going to walk this way. Um, uh, brings eight wall breakers, right? So he's going to let the queen step up here. 
takes care of those army camps, charge this biatch in, and go the wall breakers. It is successful. Go ahead and yank in with that clan castle tour. Good timing on that. Oh, come a couple Valk doesn't get the whole thing there. But poison goes down. Uh, interesting drop of that one Valk there. I think he just did kind of help this queen out so he didn't make sure he didn't have to burn that ability. That's really key. You need that ability for sure. Um, for that when that inferno tower locks onto her and so you can continue her through the process i think he's gonna drop a rage here in a second maybe not so interesting <laughs> just very methodical attack here right two giants let's open the wall in goes some valks let's drop the rest still has yet to drop the cc which is full of miners miners are going to follow the valks basically from uh 12 down to three Queen unfortunately goes down there to that Inferno Tower. Um, I might have, there's, there's a hindsight thing, I might have just used a Rage in that compartment for her. Um, I guess you were kind of saving it for the miners and stuff on this side of the base, which, yeah, there it goes. Um, so maybe, I mean, I don't know. Uh, how do you cheat the tree? But uh, I would have kept that queen going. So queen would have ended up joining by now, getting some, all that stuff. Maybe you wouldn't have got that down there. I don't know what to say. But miners moving in from the side like that. Uh, still have Valkyries in that uh, town hall compartment there doing work. Just smash this uh, sort of interesting style of base. Obviously, uh, everyone's trying to get creative, uh, getting used to the new unit still. Uh, there's all sorts of different attack styles that are coming out. Um, just every day, there's just newer variations to, to different ones and um yeah as you can see bowlers and miners guys that's how it is now town hall nine i mean that's that's all i can say i mean town hall 10 i like town hall 10s needed it somewhat easier i don't want to use the term easier but i have to <laughs> uh town hall 10s needed to to have more options maybe that's a better way to say it and ways to three-star other Town Hall 10s, especially ones that aren't fully upgraded. Now, uh, with that being said, you cannot do that without with, with hurting Town Hall 9 too much. Um, now, I know Town Hall 9 is kind of getting pushed to the side, again, I'm trying to, for lack of better terms, but um, this not getting a lot of attention necessarily because of the way the game's developing, but uh, we just need to get away. It's the, the tax at the top are a little too spammy, and bowlers in the CC at this point, uh, specifically at Town Hall 9, are insanely, uh, insanely overpowered. So, anyhow, going to call this super extended 300th win uh, recap a, a day here. It's uh, It's been a while, but 2.0, love you, the whole family. Um, wouldn't trade you guys for the world. So, North Watchers, thank you for the war. Was a was a good one. Really glad we could grab this win from you. Uh, unfortunately for you guys, like I mentioned, just those are the two that killed you. Anyhow, uh, that'll do it here for Wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help a bag that next tree star. Till then, I'm out.